Today, I am demonstrating a pelvic exam on a simulation model so you can see exactly what happens down there when you come see one of us, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN. And on this channel, I am the health class you wish you had in high school. Today, I'm talking about pelvic exams, why you might need one, why you might not need one. And I'm just gonna show you what one is like on a model so you can understand when you come to see us what's happening because so many of us have no idea what's happening down there. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe and turn on the notifications so you never miss an upload. I'll just jump right in. A pelvic exam is an exam where we are checking the organs of your pelvis. So this means the stuff on the outside, the vulva, urethra, clitoris, the perineum, or the area between the vulva and the anus, and the internal structures. So the vagina, the cervix, the uterus, the ovaries. We can do these exams as a screening exam, meaning you don't have anything wrong and we're just checking to make sure things are okay. Or if you have a complaint such as painful periods, pain with sex, other concerns, to see what might be going on. Part of a pelvic exam can include a speculum exam when we place something into the vagina so we can see your cervix and collect tests either for infection or a pap smear, which is collecting cells of the cervix to check on them and see if there are any cancerous or precancerous changes to those cells. You might have gone to the OBGYN or your healthcare provider and they tell you every year that you have to have a pelvic exam. And I want you to know that that's not always the case. In fact, the American College of OBGYN says there's really no good data to make a recommendation on whether people need annual screening pelvic exams. And they recommend that people with a vagina only have those exams if they have an issue or if there's a screening test that needs to be done. In fact, the US Preventive Services Task Force gives regular screening pelvic exams for people who are not pregnant and have no issues the grade of an I, which stands for insufficient, meaning that the current evidence is insufficient to assess the balance of benefits and harms for performing screening pelvic exams in people who have no symptoms. So the long and the short of it is that I think it's good to make a decision with your provider. I think it's important to understand the risks and the benefits of screening. The benefits is that you have a medical provider who's looking down there in an area that you may not look at yourself very frequently. And we can look for things not only related to your uterus and your cervix, but also things like skin changes that could be signs of conditions like lichen sclerosis or skin cancer. The potential harms are that these exams sometimes aren't always that fun or comfortable or can be downright painful for some people. Although if they are, you should know that you can always say stop and your provider should stop. I do want you to understand that a pelvic exam does not mean you're getting a pap smear. A pap smear is specifically when we insert a speculum into the vagina to look at your cervix and get those cells. There are two main types of speculums and I've got this metal speculum here, which I prefer using these because I don't like using the plastic versions of this. They go into the landfill, you can only use them once. And I actually find that I can use these a bit better. They move a little more in a better way than I find the plastic ones. So there's these and they come in different shapes and sizes. There's also this other kind of speculum on the market called the Nella New Spec. Are you ready? Look at this. <laughs> so it opens kind of in a four way here. Not that kind of four way, you know what I mean. But the purpose is that these little arms that go out laterally or on the side help to open the vagina kind of in a, in a whole circle as opposed to just the top and the bottom. And the top and the bottom is actually thinner than what you would find in most of the smallest metal or what we call Pedersen speculums. I have used this before. I don't love it um, in terms of visualization, but I know other OBGYNs who do. And if I had a patient where I had access to all these kinds and they wanted this, I would absolutely be happy to use it. But this is actually reusable, even though it looks like plastic. Yeah, so potentially some benefits, but not my favorite. Your provider should always use lube. Now I've got this kind of lube here because this is what I use for my model that I will show you when I do my pelvic exam. Um, but usually we have little sterile packets of lube. I have had people who've told me that their providers told them they can't use lube during a pap smear. And I'm gonna call BS on that. I think that's a very old school way of thinking. The idea that using lube is somehow going to get so much onto the cervix that you then can't get a good sample of cells to send to your pathologist. I think that's a technique issue and we should not be forcing our patients to have speculum exams without lubrication. So that's a pap smear. Now a pelvic exam could include that, but it also can include what we call a bimanual exam where we place two fingers in the vagina and we're feeling the internal organs. And I will demonstrate that on my pelvic exam in just a minute. 
Other things that we can check during a pelvic exam, if you've got complaints of pelvic pain, we can assess the muscles to see how they're doing. We can also check the skin, and I'll show you on the exam how I do that, to look for any skin or nerve disorders that could be causing discomfort. If you're having issues with urine leakage or other kinds of issues, we can check your Kegel muscles and see how your pelvic floor is working. There's a lot that we can check. Two quick tips for making the exam a bit better. Number one, pee beforehand, empty your bladder, because when we put anything in the vagina, it can give you that sensation that you need to pee. And number two, if you don't know what's going on down there and you want to know more, ask for a mirror. I have always kept mirrors handy whenever I've done exams, and I think it's so helpful to have the patient hold the mirror, and I'm able to explain their anatomy and say, look, here's your clitoris, this is your urethra, these are your labia, this looks totally normal. Oh, that's the area you were concerned about? Let's talk about that. I just find that it really helps people feel more empowered and aware of their bodies. Okay, enough of that. Go ahead and check out my show notes below to understand more about screening pelvic exams, what they are, what's recommended, what's not, pap smears, all that good stuff. Let's go do a pelvic exam. I have a setup in my basement. I borrowed these models from Paradigm Medical. I will put information in the show notes about where I got this GYN simulator from. They're an amazing female-owned company. I love them. And uh, let's go do a pelvic, shall we? Basically, I've got a GYN simulation set up in my basement, ready and waiting for this moment. All right, so here it is. Here is my GYN simulator that I've got all ready to go. I've got my speculum and my lube and my pap smear brush and this very interesting setup all here to get ready to show you how to do a pelvic exam. I will have the link in the show notes below of the company that makes these amazing simulators. I'm not getting paid to make this content. I just think their stuff is amazing. The first part of a pelvic exam is visual inspection. So that means looking at what we see here. So we want to look at the skin around the clitoral hood, around the labia. Of course, not everybody's labia look like this, and that's perfectly fine. Looking for any lumps or bumps, skin changes, any concerns that might be precancerous, warts, anything else. And yes, looking around the perineum and the anus here. We are not just vagina and vulva doctors. If when you were coming to me, you had any concerns about any pain with sex or tampon insertion, I would do something called the Q-tip test, where I would take this Q-tip swab and I would very gently touch around here and ask if you felt any pain. Oftentimes people who have vestibulodynia or vestibulitis will be very painful right in this area here. And this can give us a clue about what's going on. Next up, the speculum exam. So I've got a metal speculum here with a light that's inside there so that you can see. Speculums can be either metal or plastic. And quite frankly, I prefer metal ones because they are more environmentally friendly and they basically function in the same way. So we always use lube. And again, of course I would have gloves on if this was a real patient, but I don't have gloves here. So let's go ahead and do this. So what we do when we are doing a speculum exam is we want to be able to see the cervix, um, collect test for infection or for a pap smear. So always we talk and I say, I'm, you know, you're about to feel my touch. If anything's painful or comfortable, let me know and I'll stop. I use my top two fingers here to spread the labia and then I place the speculum this way, avoiding the urethra, which could be exquisitely painful. Going ahead and placing the speculum in only as far as it needs to go, only opening it as far as it needs to go in order to see the cervix, which I can see. And then I will use this to keep it in place. If you can see that end, a little dot at the end there, that is the cervix. I know it's a bit hard to see on the camera. And then I will use this brush to collect cells from the cervix in order to do pap smear screening or cervical cancer screening. That would go in a little container and be sent to the pathologist and they can look at it. Then when I'm done with that, if I need to get any other test for infection, I can also look around at the vaginal walls, make sure everything looks healthy. Go ahead and screw that down and take it out very gently. Next up is the bimanual exam, which is where we place two fingers in the vagina that are lubricated, of course gloved, to check the uterus, the cervix, the ovaries, if we feel any masses just to make sure things feel okay or if somebody has a specific concern. So what we do is we place two fingers in, feeling along the vagina, using the abdominal hand here to help palpate or feel the uterus and the ovaries. And with my vaginal or my internal hand, I am able to sweep and see if I can feel the ovaries, feel the uterine size, feel which way it's facing, and be done. If somebody does come in with a complaint of pain with sex or pelvic pain, it's also very important that I check the muscles. So placing one finger here and going around 
circumferentially, feeling the pelvic floor muscles just feel if they feel painful or tight, and asking my patient at each point, is this uncomfortable or painful? And I can feel if they're very hyper-contracted or in kind of an abnormally contracted state that could cause pain, and also anteriorly as well. Okay, so that was an exam. What did you think? Let me know in the show notes below. If you have any other questions about what pelvic exams are, things that you saw during when I was demonstrating that didn't make sense, go ahead and leave a comment and go ahead and like, follow, subscribe, whatever. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, and just know that I'm here to educate and empower you. Your body is not dirty. And the more you know, the better you can advocate for yourself. All right. Bye-bye.